My name is Kainton, the Tech Pro, as you know, and today I'm going to teach you how to build a neural network with TensorFlow and Keras in a few minutes, and we are going to do this step by step in seven simple steps. And I recommend you pause the video, get your system, and try to follow along, or maybe you can understand how it works, then you follow along uh, later on in your system. So I've outlined the steps we are going to follow. One, we are going to import the, data, the necessary modules, actually TensorFlow and Keras, and then two, we import the data site, which is a data site available in Keras. Then we are going to split the data site into two parts. As you know, for supervised learning, we need training data site and text data site. Then we go ahead in step four to build the neural network it's going to be made up of four layers. We have the input layer, which is actually the image we impute. We have the activation layer. We are going to be using ReLU activation. And then we are going to have a layer for compensation for, for to avoid overfitting. And it's called a dropout layer. And finally, we have the, the output layer, which is made up of 10 nodes. All right, we'll see, you'll see how this works when we start doing it. All right, so let's just, just get started. I'd like to remind you to subscribe to my channel if you've not subscribed, so just hit the subscribe button below to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss an update when a new lesson is made. And also, if you have any challenges, just let me know by leaving a comment below. So just say import TensorFlow, TensorFlow as TF, and from TensorFlow import so these are the two imports. So for now, we've completed step one. As you can see, it's really very, very, very easy. Now, if you have a message or an error message that says no module named TensorFlow, look in the description box, you'll find another video, or just search through my channel, uh, you'll find another video that solves this problem, uh, how to set up TensorFlow in, 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 in Jupyter Notebook using Anaconda Navigator. Now we are going to import the Fashion M list data set. So I'm going to call it Fashion Data. Fashion Data to import it. Simply say oh, TensorFlow dot Keras dot Keras dot data sets dot M list. So Fashion. Uh, let's okay. Let's call it Fashion Data. Is fine. All right, so I'm going to just run, let's see. Yeah, so this is fine. So you see how easy it is to build in a neural network. So now we are going to do another simple step. We are going to split this data set into text and training data sets. So I'm going to say, start with the training data set. So how the X train and the Y train. So basically this is, the X train is the features and Y train is the classes. That's for the training data set, and we do the same for the test data sets, so x test and y test as well. So, and we are going to simply say fashion data dot look underscore, not dot, sometimes I mix up underscore and, and fashion data dot fashion data dot load data load underscore data fashion data dot load underscore data so there's this mix up that happens sometimes so fashion data dots so this is how it is so at this point we are splitting it into a uh, test and train data set there's something called pre-processing or something called uh, um, scaling our data down to be to have values between zero and one to do that we are simply going to divide our training and test data by 255 because this data is made up of uh, 28 by 28 pixels images and yeah so 28 by 28 if I'm not mistaken pixels images and for each of the image we have uh, 1 to 255 so let me let me see if I can clarify this but I'm going to do that later. So let me just, for, for now, let me just know that each of the value is between 0 and 255, each of the value in the data. And each of these is a tensor. Uh, I, I'm not going to explain that at this time, but just take note of the procedure of to build a neural network, train it, and use it for, for classification. All right, so x train 
and x test equal to x string over 255. Now you can do this in two lines, it doesn't matter. So x test over 255 as well. So you can do this in two lines, you can do this in two lines. If I kind of copy this to my clipboard and I run this, and yeah, so it's downloading the data. Okay, so after I download the data, I think it's downloaded completely, so it's sub sellable. And this line, let's say I say X string, just check the shape of the of the of the of the data set. I can say X train one. So let's look at the first item, and you can see it's just a bundle of array. But I can also say X train dot the shape. Okay. So okay, so this is not callable, so just say that shape. So we have sixty thousand at twenty eight by twenty eight. All right. So, um, so the next step is to scale the data down into into values between zero and one. So I'm going to just insert a cell here and just paste what I copied to my clipboard, and everything went fine. Now this is where we get some work to do to build this neural network of four layers. You need to pay real attention to this part because this is the challenging part. Now let's start with setting up the syntax. So let's call it model is equal to is equal to tf dot keras dot models dot sequential. So we are building a simple neural network. See sequential. Alright, so this is how to set up at least we've set up something. Now here we need to specify the four layers. At this point, so first we have to the tf dot keras dot layers. So this is the first layer, and the first layer has to be flattened. I explained this in a different lesson. Check the description box, and you'll see it the, the, the explanation. So let's go for the second layer tf dot keras. Maybe I'll just actually this should be flattened. Keras.layers. The second layer will be a dense layer, so that is a fully connected layer. So a dense layer, and the third layer is now going to be the layer I told you that we are going to be using to avoid overfitting, and it's called a dropout layer. It, it introduces some kind of noise to help to compensate uh, during the training. Keras.layers.dropout. And finally, the last layer is the output layer, which gives us values from 0 to 10, 0 to 9, which is 10, 10 numbers. So, uh, tf.keras.layers, this will be a dense layer as well. Alright, so we are not done, we are not done. Uh, let's start with the, the first one. The first one is the input layer and this input layer, what you need to give as parameter to this flatten function is the shape. So input shape, as you know, is a 28 by 28 image, uh, a pixel image. All right, so um, so this is what we have. In, in case, just in case you want to see the image, I think I already have where I did it, I did something like that, but for now, I'd like to complete this lesson. So, the, 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 the other layer, which is a dense layer, you need to specify is 128 nodes, and you need to specify the activation function, it could be ReLU. ReLU means Rectified Linear Unit. And the dropouts, Value will be 0 0.2, and the last layer will have number of nodes will be 10, and the activation will be softmax. Okay, so at this point, we've built our network. I would like to recommend subscribe so that when I go in details in the next lesson to explain all of these step by step explanation, 
you get notified. So I'm going to run it. Hopefully, we don't have any error. Input shape. So it says input shape is not defined. Why? Let's see. Input shape. Plotten. Okay. Input shape. Equals, yeah, sorry, uh, I, I mixed up, should be equals. Okay, so I'm gonna run, okay. Uh, so it says warning deprecated call to data instructions, call initialize instance. Let me see, I think everything should be fine. Everything should be fine. TensorFlow from the Anaconda call init. It's B type is duplicated over the remote. Alright, so for now everything is okay. There is some update they want to do, they are just telling us. Uh, I don't I don't really know why they are always doing this. Alright, so the next thing we want to do is to compile the model. So so what we did actually was to set up the model, which is set up all the layers, and then to compile the model, I'm gonna just try the the code model that's compiled and specify the optimizer we, we need to use. So I'm going to the optimizer at this point. Optimizer is going to be Adam Optimizer, and we also specify the loss function is going to be sparse categorical cross entropy. You always have to use these for most of the cases of, uh, of uh, simple neural network analysis. Uh, cross entropy, cross entropy, and finally we specify the metrics. So metrics could be more than one. For now, let's just focus on the accuracy of this model. So I'm going to just say the metrics should be accuracy. So the metrics we use to, 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 to specify or to evaluate the performance of this model model will be using accuracy. So I'm going to run it. If we don't have any error, everything should be fine. All right, so now comes a little work that needs to be done, but this work is going to be done by the system. We are going to train this model, and to train this model, we are going to use five epochs. So an epoch simply mean, means a complete presentation uh, of the initial data set. So we're passing 60,000 data set into our neural network, it trains it, gives an output, the output is wrong, it feeds it back into the network, and after this we pass in 60,000 again, so we do five epochs. We don't call it iteration because iteration is talking about moving from one observation or one um, record to the other of the 60,000 iteration. But we are talking about epochs, meaning that 60,000 iterations times 6 times 5, because we are talking about 5, five times. So I'm going to say model dot feed x, we will put in the training, the, the training data set x train and y train and specify the epochs. Epochs is equal to 5, let's use only 5 epochs. And after training, the model is going to tell us the accuracy it achieved uh, in the course of the training. So it's running the first epoch at this time, imputing 60,000 records into our neural network uh, in the first epoch. So what I'm going to do is to tell you to be looking at the, the output, the way the output is increasing at this point, and the loss is decreasing at this point. So the, the first epoch normally takes a longer time and the, the second epoch kind of takes a shorter time to feed the, the data into the network. But as it progresses, uh, you see that in the first epoch, at the, at the end of the first epoch, we have 91.29% accuracy. And now we are in end of the second epoch, we have 95% accuracy. Let's see if it's going to get up to 99% accuracy. But one thing I want to tell you before I forget is that the accuracy that the model tells us that has been achieved is not the, the, the actual accuracy of the model. So the actual accuracy of the model is, you get it when you try to use this model 
using the test data set. And in this case, you now get the real accuracy of this model. So this is the, the fourth epoch tells us it's gotten up to 97% and it's getting up to 98%. Let's see if it gets up to 99. Uh, I doubt if it gets up to 99 because it's kind of stabilized, as you can see at uh, this point. So uh, it's, it's stabilized at 97. So I think it might just end up in 97%. Uh, that is the, the reported accuracy. Okay, perfect. Good. Everything is fine. So let's evaluate this model by feeding this model with the test data set. So I'm going to say model dot evaluate. So we are, we are now going to know the actual accuracy of this model uh, and compare it with what it tells us because it tells us it's an accuracy of 97%. But let's see the actual accuracy at this point. So I'm going to let's say X test passing the test data set, the test, uh, the, the test data set, and uh, Y test. Okay, I'm giving the test data set at this point. And let's evaluate. Right, so it evaluates and it tells us that the accuracy is actually 97%. That is great. And the loss is 0, 0.0. Okay, so it's, it tells us it performs, it actually performed better in when in the test data site. And this is this is something really good. If your model performs very, very well in the test data site, means you've built a really good model. So can you recall what we've done? Take some time, go back, do it yourself, and subscribe to my channel so that when I make updates, you get notified. If you have challenges following these lessons, uh, leave me a comment below. Now, this is the fast, quick, and data way to build a neural network. In the next lesson, I'm going to try to go uh, in detail to so explain some of the theories of, uh, of building a neural network using TensorFlow and Keras. So we'll see you in the next class.